He's the lovable nerd with zombie killing, UFO hunting, and tactical espionage on a CV. Where are you boys from? England. England. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down the top 10 performances by writer, actor, comedian Simon Pegg. I wonder if you could uh, help me identify a few people. Before we begin, if you enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe for more great content. So, get ready to pick your favourite flavour of Cornetto. We're going to the Winchester. Yeah, well, I'm scared. Of what? <laughs> Number 10, the editor, Doctor Who. Being a self-proclaimed geek, Peg and Doctor Who are a match made in heaven, so a guest appearance by the funny man was bound to happen at some point. For Peg's Who outing, he appeared as the editor, an all-seeing, all-knowing pawn of the Jagrafess. I'm merely a humble slave. I answer to the editor-in-chief. Peg's ability to portray a smug baddie plays perfectly here, as the mind-reading editor interrogates and intimidates our protagonist, and grows increasingly frustrated when he doesn't get what he wants. Well, now, there's an interesting point. Is a slave a slave? If he doesn't know, he's enslaved. Yes. We just wish he was a permanent addition to the Doctor Who cast, because he fits the bill flawlessly. Um, actually, sir, if it's all the same to you, I think I'll resign. Bye then. Number 9, Benji Dunn, Mission Impossible franchise. Every secret agent needs their own guy in the chair, and for Tom Cruise's Ethan Hunt, that's Benji Dunn. The location of that number is Shanghai. There, I just told you, Shanghai, I've just aided and abetted an enemy of the state. Fantastic, thank you. Always on hand to deliver split-second life-saving advice, or simply act as a terrified psychic, Peg's lovable nerdiness shines here, mainly because a nervy yet enthusiastic tech guru isn't far from the real Peg. Benji, the plane! Yes, the package is on the plane, we get it! With Cruz performing death-defying stunts left, right and centre, Peg's Benji delivers much-needed comic relief to the action-packed franchise. Here's some more of Benji in the future. Benji, open the door! Yeah, 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 okay, okay. Number 8, Gus, Big Nothing. It's not very often that Peg plays an out-and-out backstabbing douchebag with no redeeming qualities whatsoever, but that's exactly what he is in Big Nothing. A wannabe criminal mastermind that ropes David Schwimmer's Charlie into blackmailing a reverend, Gus isn't afraid of throwing his associate under the bus when it suits him. Pick the blue one, and you go back to your old life. But pick the red one, and you finally get to be a free man. As the plot thickens, Gus learns that everyone may just be as conniving as him, and we watch as he reels off lies and deceit like nobody's business. And that wait till tomorrow, because, like, I'm sure it'll be a lot more productive if we'd had, like, a good night's sleep. One thing's for sure, you don't want to reach this guy at a call center. Feel feisty, you whiny little turkey neck bitch. Number seven, Gray and Willy, Paul. Ah yes, the first appearance of the dynamic duo Peg and Frost for today's list. And here they play two traveling comic book fans who get a little more than they bargained for when visiting a UFO site. Encountering alien Paul, voiced by Seth Rogen, Graham is a terrified yet intrigued goofball, and Peg plays it brilliantly. What have you done to him? I didn't do anything to him, he fainted. Never quite sure whether he's going to turn and face the music or simply turn and run away, Peg does what he does best. He shows us what the everyman would do given an ET encounter. There's probably billions of intelligent civilizations out there. <laughs> so where is everybody? Hmm? I. But one of them's there! Are they looking? Are they looking? Number 6, Sidney Young, How to Lose Friends and Alienate People A fame-hungry journalist can be pretty dangerous, and if this movie is anything to go by, they can be pretty hilarious too. Yeah, that... that isn't me. This is me. Peg plays Sidney Young, a desperate British journalist who wants to make it in a big mag in New York City, and he'll do near enough anything to do so. Whether it's his inappropriate line of questioning, strong feelings about Con Air, or his comical way of killing pets, we can't help but love this irritating, dysfunctional sad sack. Con Air. I beg your pardon? Con Air. Right? It's got everything, hasn't it? Oh, and uh, wait till you see him dance. <laughs> Number five, Gary King, The World's End. We all know a Gary King, that guy we went to school with who refuses to grow up, and who better to play a big kid than Peg? You could almost say an antique. Well then, let's get this antique on the roadshow! Determined to get his old mates together for a pub crawl, King sports the same goth stitches, obnoxious attitude, and deluded self-importance as the old days. 
claiming he's always on top of the situation, even when he has no idea what's going on. A, we're all drunk. B, they might be in it. And C, we've got blood on our hands. It's more like ink. We've got ink on our hands. He's loud, lewd, and can't take a hint. But when the locals go rogue, you'd be glad he's in your corner. <laughs> Number four, Montgomery Scotty Scott, Star Trek franchise. Another fanboy outing for Peg as he boards the Starship Enterprise as reliable engineer Scotty. Scotty, it's Kirk. Oh, well now. If I isn't Captain James Tiberius perfect here. Together with his broad Scottish accent and affinity for worrying all the time, he's the sensible companion you need when exploring the perils of space. Although he can tussle and fend for himself when it comes down to it. Do you have any idea how ridiculous it is to hide a starship on the bottom of the ocean? We've been doing here since last night. And he gets into his own fair share of sticky situations, with Peg's hysterical mannerisms providing much of the franchise's comedy and drama. Beam me up, uh, Simon. Now that's Starfleet property, okay? Can I just take it apart? But I'm feeling generous today, so I'll have at it. Number three, Nicholas Angel, Hot Fuzz. Nicholas Angel, or is it Angle, is an exemplary by the book police officer who gets forced to work in the countryside, and he soon detects that something's not quite right in his idyllic setting. Yeah, hopefully that's the last we'll see of him. His sharp, city-born edges make for some hilarious scenes against the backdrop of an everyone-knows-everyone village. Before long, shootouts, murders, and dramatic send-off lines ensue. Peg and Frost star alongside each other again here, but watching Peg play the reserved, boring stickler is a sight we rarely get to see. Through the gardens? What's the matter, Danny? You've never taken a shortcut before. Number two, Tim Bisley, Spaced. In what is arguably Peg's truest portrayal of himself, Tim is a struggling comic book artist with useless flatmate Daisy along for the ride. Did you do this? Yes. From casually getting stoned in his flat to stubbornly debating the Phantom Menace, he's simply a geek with too much time on his hands, so a relatable character for many. People like you make me sick! What's wrong with you? Flooded with pop culture references, Spaced was instrumental in launching Peg's career alongside director Edgar Wright, and it proved to the world that Peg had a lot to offer the world of comedy. Oh my god. What? I've got some f***ing Jaffa cakes in my coat pocket. Number one, Sean, Sean of the Dead. The film that proved the zombie apocalypse can be funny and that the average Joe can survive it, given a decent cricket bat that is. Peg plays Sean, a 30-something loser with girlfriend problems and a dead-end job, who finds himself fighting for survival against the living dead. <laughs> Throwing records, fleeing to the pub and doing his best zombie impression, Sean has us saying, yep, I'd probably do that, making him the perfect poster boy for the end of the world. I think we hit something. Or someone. But it's not all just laughs. Peg shows us his dramatic acting chops too. It's just, it just, he doesn't like me! He's always hated me and now he wants to shoot my mum! Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.